Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be finishing up our little series in the TF-104G here with the difficult part, and that's going to be landing. We've got ourselves a pretty good flight so far, we've done all sorts of interesting navigation. We've got ourselves kind of lost in the desert, and now it's time to put this thing down on the ground. So let's get started. So first things first, uh, this aircraft lands at high speed. Now, when I say high speed, I don't mean like, oh, look, 150. I mean like, oh, 225 if the flaps don't work. The other thing this aircraft does, which is sort of unique, is it has a special system called blown flaps. What blown flaps are is actually this super clever idea where we take some air away from the engine and we actually blow them over the little teeny tiny wingtips that are barely supporting us in the air here. The whole concept of that is basically to improve our lift without having to increase angle of attack or anything crazy like that. Now the problem with that particular technique is if you reduce your engine power too far, the blown flaps will shut themselves off, which will also mean the aircraft loses its lift. Now, in the real world, when you lost your lift dramatically like this with the airplane, usually it wasn't even. You'd lose one wing, not the other, and the plane would go, whoa, like that on you all of a sudden. And next thing you know, you'd be eating dirt, which is not something we want to do. So that's one of the next challenges. The final challenge is the difference between our cruise speed and landing speed are not much, which means when we're going to be landing this thing, we're going to be coming in fast, and we're also going to take some time to slow down. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this throttle back a little bit. One thing you want to always remember is keeping an eye on what your limitations are. 260 is or not limitation here. Notice my takeoff extension is 450 knots. We can actually pop those flaps down at any time, but notice my landing flaps are restricted to 240 knots. So you got to kind of keep that in mind. So there's our runway right off the left-hand side. That's our Creech Air Force Base. Let's zoom in. Teeny tiny little runway, but it's more than enough for us. So how do we do this? Well, first things first, you want to get your airspeed less than 260 knots so we can start getting this plane nice and dirty. So now that I see that I'm less than 260, I'm going to go ahead and pop the flaps down. I'm going to go also pop down my first notch of flaps. As soon as you do that with this aircraft, everything starts to come up just a tiny bit, which is uh, no problem at all because the plane is going to be slowing down so fast you're not going to know what to do with yourself. Go ahead and poke out my window right here. We're a little on the high side. I'm going to let the nose come down just a little bit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pop on our next set of flaps. Ah, don't do that. If you were to do that immediately, the blown flaps would kick in and it would flip the plane. It would not be pleasant. So instead what you want to do is you want to put out the speed brakes, increase your throttle, then put out the notch of flaps. So at this point, the aircraft has got its speed brakes out, it's got its flaps deployed, and the blown flap system is on. Now the blown flaps only work at 80% RPM or greater. So when you're approaching, if you pull your throttle below 80%, the blown flaps will fail and the aircraft will go and do one of those on you. Uh, basically, yes, yeah, just like that. That's exactly what it will do if you go too low. So that's something you want to keep your mind on. Now this is truly an aircraft that you fly with a throttle on the way down. You want to make sure those speed brakes are out the boards because it's to make it much much easier to set this thing on the ground line yourself up with the ground you can see i'm doing just about my intended approach speed which is usually around 170 knots it depends completely of course on how heavy you are we're relatively heavy because we've only burnt just a little bit of fuel here slightly off course i'm going to pick a point right at the end of the runway believe it or not this aircraft is tilted upwards right now it is not tilted downwards so you got to be sitting there playing with the throttle you can see i'm about 92 percent rpm and we are sinking like something is broken on the plane this is just a tremendous tremendous airplane next problem we're going to have is you are very very low to the ground i'm actually just above the afterburner detent right now i can almost get into the burners here in order to keep this thing stable it just gives you an idea of how crazy this plane is so here's what we do we put the plane on the ground then we reduce the throttle there's my touchdown point i'm going to flare gently plane's got to come down whoop got a little bit of a bounce there that's fine it's okay if you bounce there we go come back down reduce the throttle after we're on the ground pull down the brakes and we're going to go ahead and pull on the drag chute this thing's pretty cool it pops out the back that is a really really tiny drag chute for a plane this big go ahead and mash the brakes the brake on this thing is really really easy to use and that's all there is to it Go ahead and bring in my flaps, bring in my speed brakes, and start hitting ourselves out. Go ahead and bring in that, oh, drag chute already pulled itself out, apparently. Rip. That's the switch to go ahead and distract it. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to pop ourselves right off the runway, and now we're safe. So as you can see, it's not terrible. I did bounce it a little bit there, but that's my mistake for trying to explain things as I did them rather than just do them. Using the speed brakes is a great tip here because what it will do is it allow you to keep your engine at a higher RPM during the approach, making it a little bit simpler. One thing you do want to watch out for if you are kind of heavy like I am right now, I still have fuel left in my little tip tanks here. If you do do something like that, you're going to find that your landing speed is just going to be that much higher and it's going to be that much more likely to do a bounce on it. But at the very least, you can see as long as you keep those RPMs up, keep everything all set up and you gently play the plane and you don't bring the throttle down until you're on the ground you should be able to get it much better like i said i still need practice but we've only had this airplane for a week other than that enjoy